my babies, boys and girls, and everyone in between. I hope you all are feeling cho, gojon, osta. I'm feeling good. Thank you. Thank you. So with that said, <laughs> the reason why I wanted to say that is because like, I think a lot of people, when it comes to my vlogs, when it comes to my content, a lot of y'all, when you hear me say, with that said, y'all just check out. And you don't look at the fucking timeline bar. Because, you know, like, even though I might think that I'm ending the vlog, you know, there might be more stuff that just pops into my mind that I feel like I got to get out because I'm not sure if I have ever expressed it before, right? But, or, or it could be that I actually want to sort of, uh, like, add onto that or capitalize on a moment that I didn't fully get to you all, yeah? So, stick around. Just be here now, right? Are you watching my vlog? Give me the time. If you can't give me the time when I publish my vlog, just stick around. Stay present, yeah? So, in today's vlog, what the hell am I talking about today? You know, let me pull over and uh, share with you all my thoughts, right? As I do. But before we do that, let's get back to Northern Cree. Everyone is going all in on beauty and to maintain their allure at the cost of their overall health. Fix this one thing, but oops, now this other thing is off balance. It all started back in the 1960s with the plastic surgery boom. I don't like how my cheeks look. My eyes are sagging. I've got the turkey neck, right? I think the one thing that makes sense is a nose job because your nose is in the center of your face. It's an unmistakable facial facet that like, you can't hide. You know, everyone sees it. There aren't sunglasses for your nose. You know, there isn't a hat for your nose or a scarf for your nose, right? If you had a birth defect or an injury that caused deformity to your face, then you have a legitimate reason to repair or even renew it, which has nothing to do with superficiality. But nowadays, people generate crowdfunding to raise money to have these surgeries to look like someone else. Do you realize how offensive that is to your mother? <laughs> You're you, okay? You're the only you that will ever be. Humans are like seconds. This second of this minute, of this hour, of this day, of this year will only happen once. But so many people are too malleable and make themselves susceptible to become robots. It's like your putty sitting in the sun. This is how people are recruited into cults because they don't have a firm grip on their sense of self. Or maybe they don't, they don't have a handrail to a structured morality which could actually help them to build their social ethics. I understand why people do it but it's a silly fear that they won't find someone that will love them for who they are. So they invent this popular personality. But those people who you think their love is so important to you only give you a fleeting rush of adulation and it's not real. This is why when you find someone who loves you for you, it means everything. You know, don't do anything for these sycophants and users who admire you for one or a few aspects. Because they're not going to be with you for the long haul. You have a unique gift that can only be opened by those who love you for you being yourself. I saw this YouTuber who I used to follow and he talked about his PTSD from his abusive mother. It was so crippling that... It got him super depressed and even suicidal. He'd been to many therapists and it seemed like nothing had been working for him. And he even elected to have this surgery that would sever a connection in his brain to his traumatic memory. That is the most laziest corner cutting thing I've ever heard of. 
yeah, it's true that sometimes it takes a while to find a therapist that you mesh with. But it could also be that these people aren't dedicated to their self-betterment. And they would rather be a sad sack of shit because they've been that way for so long. And they feel like that pit of despair that they're in, it's too high to climb out of. You can't go to therapy and expect your therapist to do all the work. It's not their life. You have to put in the work too. If you say that therapy isn't working for you, it's because you have a self-defeating attitude and find more pleasure in complaining and being hateful towards life. And if you recognize that as your own behavior, you've got mountains to tread, my boy. You gotta go find yourself. So now, there's a shortage of Adderall because people are using it to dial in their focus. I've recently heard that people are using Ozempic to trigger appetite loss. <sighs> you know, it's like no one wants to put in the hard work it takes to achieve their goals. I used to be one of those people out there that, you know, I used to always think to myself, I wish that there was like a pill that I could take where it could magically heal my maladies, my body, and put muscles where they should be. But the person who I am today, you know that guy, that weirdo XX mutant, the one that you're watching right now? I like the struggle. I love the challenge. And even the setbacks. Because those are the things that strengthen me to overcome resistance. I love to embrace the suck. Just to refresh your memory, I eat a very low carb diet under 40 carbs per day. I manage portion control. I fast for 23 hours a day with a one hour eating window which also manages my insulin resistance. Then once a week, I fast for 72 hours. The 72 hours of fasting is hard, no joke. But that's why when it became easier for me, I started kicking up the intensity with sleep deprivation and abstinence. And for me, abstinence is a motherfucker because I'm a hedonist and I know that I am, okay? I accept that about myself. And that's why I need hard things to do, to discipline myself and to keep my mind active, keep my hands off my freaking dick, right? That's why I have a dominatrix. I go there strictly for discipline training because I need discipline. And I like getting a beating to silence my bitch voice. We all like to win. But what kind of victory is it when you cut corners and cheat? It's a shallow victory and it doesn't give you a long lasting good memory because you cheated. I said this back when my PTSD was crushing me. My marriage counselor told me he could prescribe some antidepressants to take the edge off of me. And I said, no, fuck no. Because when I overcome this, I get to say that I did it by myself, okay? I did it because I wanted to do it. And I wanted to hog all that victory for me. Because if I took these drugs, sertraline and whatever, you know, those drugs would get the victory, not me. And how hard is it to pop a pill, right? I mean, that's what this whole conversation is all about. And I believe that that very same principle is applied to my sobriety. I stopped cold. I didn't need Alcoholics Anonymous, fuck groups, fuck clubs. You all know how the hell I feel about that. You know, essentially, you know, I'm alone in this battle against myself. And you should see it the same way too. You have to rely upon yourself. Even my therapist said, you know, when I made all this breakthrough, she said, I didn't do anything. She said that you just figured it out on your own. And, you know, I still see her, but as a counselor to share my poetry, bounce ideas off of her, she still helps me to see things in a different way which I find extremely helpful because if I only go by my thoughts, I'm sure I'm gonna get myself in trouble or I'm gonna start walking myself in circles. This is why I value the input of the select few people I have in my life. But all things considered, you cannot go full blast into the all natural camp when it comes to supplements and cosmetics. You get these people that trumpet the holy gospel of being all natural. Just remember that a bear is all natural, a shark is all natural, and they'll kill your fucking ass. You need to bring up these interests to engage in supplements with your doctors because 
they are the ones who are reading your blood work. You know, they know what you're genetically predisposed to and what risks can become mortal dangers for you. I used to bring up these things with my doctor like 25 years ago and he'd always shoot them down. And that would make me so nervous about bringing up new ideas about weight loss to him. Weight gain had only been a problem soon after my endocrinologist put me on 5 milligrams of prednisone to combat my panhypopituitarism or PHP for short. And I had no clue that I was getting fat until one of my cousins actually made a public note that I was fat. He grabbed me on the side and goes, hey, you're getting chunky over here. Hey, cousin. I was like, what the what? Oh my God, I didn't even notice. You know, I ate before, but I didn't feel ravenously hungry until after my prescribed dosage of prednisone. And I've thought of going off of prednisone to help me in my weight loss, but at the cost of my energy and my daily activities, you know, I realized that it wasn't a solution in the least. Then one day, out of the blue, my doctor had me come in. Unfortunately, I was like one block away from him. And he ordered an EEG. Uh, and the results found that I had two small silent heart attacks. <laughs> they were a cause because of my abuse of Red Bull energy drinks, which, doing at the, which at the same time of my life, I was also abusing alcohol. Needless to say, my doctor tore me a new one. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing to yourself, Kaino? You're going to freaking die, yo. So, all natural ingredients like caffeine, guarana, are not modulated to have equal levels from serving to serving. And I'll be the first one to say, fuck the FDA. But you can't be a slave to media marketing also. You got to use this thing up here. You know your little noggin? You got to use it. Right? So, just do hard work and commit yourself to your goal when you set out to accomplishing your goals don't stare at the ultimate goal just work at it every day day by day because if you become obsessed with the ultimate then you're fixating and it'll seem insurmountable you know like I say just do something every day because if you're doing something my babies it means you're not doing nothing I love you all I care very deeply about everyone and that's why I share from myself and that's, this is why I make myself the main example okay so once again thank you so much for popping in chiming in uh, I greatly appreciate your presence here you know I, I, I really appreciate you reaching out to me and you know us having these deep enriching conversations yeah, what do? Take care. Much love. Until I see you all again. Peace, good animals, babies. Reach out, speak up, and speak out. And please slow down and stop for wildlife. Oh, hold on. I'm almost forgetting my, my, my things. Have confidence in yourself. But don't believe your own hype. Don't take yourself too seriously. And don't forget to make fun of yourself. Yeah? And then... Just remember also that uh, success and happiness are subjective. Be inspired by others, but motivate yourself. And be where you want your experience to be and just stay there. Nestle in there, yeah? And just let patience and presence be your guide. Toodles, darling. <laughs>